Morning guys, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self-Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. What we're going to do today is we're going to continue with our Scandinavian bushcraft kit and we're going to make a crooked knife today. It's a very simple design process to make a hooked blade for carving concavities in wood. And like we talked about in the five tool rule video, there's really five things you need to do to manipulate wooden materials to make usable objects. You need to cross cut the grain. You need to be able to split the wood along the grain. You need to be able to shape the wood. You need to be able to bore holes in the wood and then cut concavities into the wood. And the hook knife is both a planing type tool for shaping as well as a tool for making concavities. And the traditional makatagan, it was called by the Native American peoples, is something that was used to make things like canoes, snowshoes, and those type implements. And it was a very important tool to the Native Americans. And Blue Jacket said that his most important possessions were his axe, his wife, and his crooked knife. So he put great importance on this tool. Now, in the period of 910 AD, back in Europe and Scandinavia, there are also finds from Anglo-Saxon periods of a knife that has a hooked blade on it as well from that area of the world. And so when I think about a hook knife, and the hook knife was also written about by people like Ellsworth Yeager in his book on Wildwood Wisdom, when I think about a hook knife, the Makatagan was a knife that was really beveled on the top of the blade and it was used reverse handed to do drawing type tasks for planing and shaping wood. Whereas the European style hook knife is beveled on the bottom side so that it lifts itself out of the wood when you're making concavities. So today we're going to design something that's kind of a combination of those two tools, the hook knife and the makatagan. And that's something that Ben Orford did very well in some of the tools that he's got. And I've got several of his makatagans that he's made and they are a variation where they are beveled on the bottom. And that's not to say that no makatagans were ever beveled on the bottom because they may very well have been. We only have limited evidence of any of these things from the past. So maybe the ones that have been found, or the ones that have been restored, that were used in the you know late 17, early 1800s, were beveled on the top side instead of the bottom. So we assume they all were. It's hard to say. But I think that peoples from different time periods tried lots and lots of different things to see what works best for them. And for making concavities, you really want that bevel on the bottom so that instead of being like a chisel grind that digs into the wood, you want it to be something that lifts itself out of the wood more like a gouge. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a couple blank pieces of stock today, just a piece of 1095 and a piece of scrap walnut here from our knife shop. And we're going to make a handle very reminiscent of a makatagan, and we're going to make a blade very reminiscent of a hook knife and combine those two together to make usable tool for the eastern woodlands. Stay with me. Okay, so you can see what I've got here. I've got a piece of eighth inch 1095 here, and I've kind of divided out and marked tang here and blade here, and then we'll start to profile that here in a minute. Then I've taken a piece of scrap walnut here, reclaim walnut, and I've drawn a handle shape on it that's going to be conducive to use it upside down if I want to in a pulling, or I can also just grab it here, it's got a nice palm swell in it as well, to use it the other direction. But either way, this should become a very usable tool. So we're gonna cut this handle out as well, but we're gonna make our blade first, and then we'll work on the handle. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is we wanna clean this up and make sure that we have got the shape that we want of the blade to begin with before we profile our blade edge. And we also want to reduce this tang a little bit so that we can stick it into a hole, just like we did with the knife yesterday that we made, and epoxy it in place. And that'll be the difference between a makatagan that's usually mounted to the bottom in a recess and then wrapped, and a hook knife, which is generally inserted into the handle. So we're gonna insert this one into the handle, but the handle will be shaped similar to a makatagan. So we'll get this thing up here, and I usually use a block of wood. And all I really wanna do is make sure that I've got a good straight edge here to begin with to work with. and that everything's nice and squared up. Okay, 
Okay. Now, I'm going to reduce my tang just a little bit here. Okay, we're pretty good now. All right, so there's what we ended up with. That gives us our tang and our blade. We've got a pretty even bevel here on both sides and we've got our tang created already for our rat tail tang to go up in the handle. And now we're ready to start working on our blade. Now the next thing I did was I got my profile up here at the top. And so it's going to sit like this and be hooked up when we're done. But now we need to put our bevel in before we do any heating or bending on this thing. We want to get our initial bevel on this thing first. So now we need to think about that. If this tool is going to be used in this fashion, then we're going to want the bevel side on the bottom. And it only gets beveled on one side, not both. So we're going to bring our bevel from this side up to the top for a left-handed tool. Okay, so we've got our tool on the jig, and remember we're going to grind this side and this side only to have a single bevel, so we're not worried about going past center line this time. But we're using that same jig, which is about 11 degrees. And we're just going to put this on here and begin to grind our bevel in. Now you just want to take your time with this. You can see this bevel is going clear across the piece. We don't have enough width to leave ourselves any meat up here, but that's a good thing because we want that bevel to be the full width of that so that when we convex it over a little bit later, which we will do, that will help it to pull itself out of the concavity. And we'll hand put that convex in there later on on a fine belt once we get our initial grind on here. Constantly checking my thickness and looking for that wire edge. Now, as I see I'm getting close to my wire edge here on my initial grind, I'm going to change out to a ceramic belt that's not quite taking as much meat off. I'm getting close to where I want to be in this step of the process. Now what's really important in this step is that we are cognizant of what the top and the bottom is. Because when we bend this, we don't want to bend the wrong side and have to start over by straightening it out again. I'm going to use a really lightweight hammer. And I'm just taking it really slow to get exactly what I want here. Now I'm going to 
bend my tang just a little bit to drop the front end of this hook down. And then I'm going to clean it up and we're going to go ahead and quench it. It's no different than the other blades that we've quenched as far as that goes.